today we're going to be exploring exponential growth and exponential decay with transformation. All right, I think I'm going to skip over this because I need to go slow today. All right, students will be able to graph exponential functions by identifying their transformations. So we're going to have an explore activity first, okay, but last week we talked about, first of all, this function here, y equals 2 to the x. Okay, so all of our exponential functions have one point in common, right? Can somebody share with me? Llama? 0, 1. So this one is at 0, 1, and this one is at 0, 1. Today we'll discover that 0, 1 is going to shift to the right and left and up and down and stretch possibly, but it still is a reference point, okay? It still helps us out. Now, can anybody explain to me why does all, do all of our um, functions have, our exponential functions have 0, 1? Matthew? Back, all of them would have zero one, right? Anything to the zero power is one, right? So anything to the zero power is one. The only way that that would be affected is if I added something to it or subtracted something to it, right? So we're gonna right now we're gonna explore those shifts. I'm gonna come back to this problem here. What happens if b is less than zero? Okay, we'll talk about that as well. But right now, okay, so let's just review how I would graph this. So my first reference point would be when x is 0. So when x is 0, I get 1. So when x is 0, we have 1. When x is 1, I get 2. So when x is 1, I get 2. And when x is 2, I get 4. So when x is 2, I get 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if I go in the negative direction, when x is negative 1, a negative exponent makes a positive fraction. Exactly. So 1 half. So over to the negative 1, 1 half. Over negative 2, we're going to get 1 fourth. Over one, negative 3, we're going to get 1 eighth, right? It's going to get keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then we explored that when I have a fraction underneath, right, it's just like writing one half is also equal to two to the negative one. Correct? So it's all these same points, only they're reflected over the y-axis. So if you see a one-half, it's the same thing as two, only reflected. So for instance, if I wanted to know x to the zero, we're going to need to cover this one up. Uh-oh. So let's talk about when 2 to the negative 1, so the 0 power is always going to be 1, then 2 to the negative 1, so the first power is going to be, well, 2 to the 1 is 2, right? But instead now we're going to have 1 half, we're going to go over 1 a half, so it's going to be 1 half. So if I go to 2 to the, when I make x, Two is just going to be one fourth. Now let's go in the negative direction. So when I say two to the negative one, it's going to make it positive one, so it makes it two. Make sense? So that's two. So two to the negative one. Now I'm going to make x negative two, which is going to make it four. So negative two up one, two, three, four. And you don't have to do this work, like I said for all of these, all, if you know this one, right, if you know this graph, this graph looks exactly like it, only flipped. 
Three o'clock today. Yeah, that's it. Because it had something with it. I could. I didn't need to. Does that make sense? There was nothing in there. So I needed to with this one. It's just because I had something going with it, so I decided I was going to put parentheses so you could distinguish between them. Because if I didn't put a parenthesis around there, it would look like negative 10. Does that make sense? It's just easier to look at, Essence. That's it. It just makes it easier to like look at what I'm looking at. This one, you don't have to. You could. It doesn't make a difference. Okay? All right. So now I'm going to have you guys explore... Well, let's just talk about the features of this. Okay, so here's 2 to the x. We kind of call 2 to the x our parent graph. It really isn't, but it's kind of the most simplistic. The reason we don't have a parent graph is because you can never have, you can never have y equals 1 to the x. Right? It's just going gonna, gonna to be a straight line. So does that make sense why we don't have a parent graph for it? So our parent graph is kind of 2 to the x, so the base of 2, and it kind of, we can compare graphs that way. And then 3 to the x is just going to look like 2 to the x with a, a more of a stretch, right? So we explored that already. So I'm going to look at our most simplistic exponential function. We'll call it kind of our parent graph. Nate, I need you to stop drawing for me. All right, so is it growth or decay? This is growth, because we always read a graph from left to right, and this is growing. Our reference point, we really have two reference points we look at. We have 0, 1, 0, 1, right? And then the next one we have is this tells us what our base is. So if I go over 1, so if I was trying to figure out what my base was, and I go over 1, check this out. If I go over 1, it's up 2. So if my answer is 2, what must my base be? 2. You see how I just figured that out? Okay. okay. So, y equals something to the x, right? See it? It's just, so if I look at when x is 1 and I get 2, I know that this must be a 2. Does that help? Question mark? Better? Okay. So we're going to use that to discover. We'll be able, by the end of this lesson, we'll be able to look at a graph and you'll be able to tell me what the base is, what the stretch is, what the um, horizontal and the vertical transformations are. Hopefully, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. It's an exponential function, and it has transformations just like all the rest of our our graphs do, our functions do. Okay, so my reference point on this one is going to be 0, 1, and 1, 2. And that kind of tells us what my base is. My asymptote, super important. Make sure asymptote's in green. So my asymptote on this one is going to be that x-axis because this can continue to grow, 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 and it's going to grow, 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 but it's never going to fall beneath this line right here. So let's change the color for it. Green. So y it always must be everything. Our graph is going to include everything that y is greater than 0. Make sense? Okay. Yes. For an exponential function, yes. Okay. We'll see, essence, as I'm, if I were to put in all the values, see that? It's for x. It's never going to, it's always going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's never going to become into the negative numbers. Yeah, there's just an infinite amount of fractions, right? It's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. 
just like our rational functions did. Remember when they looked like this? Right? We've had asymptotes. This would just get smaller and smaller and smaller, but we know it would never touch. Well, no, we're going to have shifts, which is going to move, right? So if this whole graph was to shift down one, then I know that everything could be greater than negative one. And that's what we're going to, guys, I don't want to get too much into it, but that's what we're going to discover right now, okay? My end behavior. You guys are asking all the right questions, right? But I'd rather we you discover them rather than you just say them because, you know, we've already lost Gene. He's already taken a nap. Okay. Gene. Gene. Okay. All right. End behavior. So we always talk about end behavior as in when X is going in what? In the positive direction and when X is going in the negative direction. So what's happening to my graph? as x goes in the positive direction. It just keeps going up, 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 so it becomes positive. And as the function goes in the negative direction, I'm sorry, as x goes in the negative direction, what's the function doing? It's going negative, 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 right? I shouldn't say that, though because it doesn't keep going to negative, it's going to zero, right? So instead of, no, not positive one, but as x, as x goes in the negative direction, f of x goes to zero. There's a different way to write it, and we will write it that way when we're looking at domain, but no, it's right. No, it's the graph is going to zero. Is it ever touching zero? No, but it's going closer and closer to zero. But that's not saying it's ever touching. No, that's no, not it's saying. It says it's going to zero. Okay. okay? It's going in the direction of zero. Yes. Uh, why do we like the end behavior? Are we just saying? We're just talking about what the graph is doing. <laughs> It's just something when we're taught when we're st we're studying graphs, right? And so we talk about things that are going on with graphs. They have domains, they have ranges, and they have end behaviors. I couldn't make an equation with that. No, nope, you couldn't. You could just talk about what it could look like. Okay. That's a good question. All right, so my domain x is in between. Obviously, x is going this way and this way, right? Is it negative infinity to positive infinity? But it really is, keep, it keeps going infinitely, keep skimming that zero. So I could say all real numbers, okay? Because it's going this direction and this direction. But my range, it has a limit, right? It has a limit. So y is in between zero is its bottom, oh, yeah. right? It can't go past zero, but when it's going in the positive direction, it's going to infinity. Okay? How are we doing so far? Good. 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 Okay, so you guys are going to do this, but for, you guys are going to be looking at 3 to the x. And I'm not going to give it away. I'm going to do 3 to the x. You're going to choose 2 to the x. Oh, no, we're going to be dealing, on your homework, you're going to be doing three. So I'm going to leave this up for you for your transformation worksheet. And we're going to do that for about ten minutes. Once you do that and we talk about it, you should be ready for your homework. Okay? All right. So pausing. One. So I like what Matthew said. This one is technically y equals 2 to the x plus 0. Right? So you need to discover what adding something to this does. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then the second part, the last two on the front, you're trying to figure out what adding something to this does. Let's, let's um, duplicate it. So 
So the second one, or the third and the fourth, you're trying to figure out what adding something to this does. So pausing. And your attention, it might be helpful to graph this parent function of a base of two on all four graphs on the front. Then put whatever the transformation is in Desmos, like two to the x plus three, and, see, and then plot it and see how it, how it shifts. It's going to shift somehow, right? What two shift estimates are we normally used to? There's two different shifts that we've been dealing with with all of our transformations. What are they? A vertical shift and a horizontal shift. So these numbers are probably going to have vertical and horizontal shifts. You just got to figure out how they work. Don't worry about the backside. We're going to discover this together, guys. You guys have been working hard. I'm, I'm happy with it. Let me show you how I would do this super quick. Ready? You're not turning this in. This was just for to make you think. So at this point, you could basically fold it in half, right? Because you're not going to need it. It was just to make, easier, to make your brain think, okay? Don't worry about copying all this down as I'm talking. It doesn't matter. It's not something that you're going to turn in. Okay, that's what activities are about. All right, so I know, and hopefully you guys discovered, that when I add three, it makes my graph, my whole, let's do this. Let me make sure that this isn't going to move. Let's see. Hmm. It's not letting me put it. All right, so I'm going to ignore the positive 3, and I'm just going to graph 2 to the x. 2 to the x is 0, 1 is my first reference point, right? When I put in 0, I get 1. When I put in 1, I get 2. When I put in 1, I get 2. When I put in 2, I get 4, 2, 1, 2, Two, one, two, three, four. When I put in negative one, I get a half. When I put in negative two, I get a four. So there's, I don't really need that many points. I just need those four. This is what my graph looks like. I'm going to grab it all and group it. Okay, so there's two to the x. So what did you guys discover when I added 3? It shifted up 3, right? 1, 2, 3. It did not shift in the um, horizontal direction. It stayed just like that. But it shifted. I'm not going to make that. Let's do this. Let's make a rule. The horizontal asymptote, I'm just going to make a shading because it's not really an asymptote because it touches it. I just want to reference the fact that it didn't move. It's staying just like that. But when it shifted up three, it created a horizontal asymptote, which is the real asymptote. This one just tells me it's staying with the y-axis or the x-axis, right? You're, we're only going to have our horizontal asymptotes, but we will have reference asymptotes. I don't know. If, you'll see what I mean in just a second, okay? So we're looking at that. Let me just do this last one, Andrew. Okay, so there shouldn't be any writing right now, remember? I just want you absorbing, guys. Don't even put pencils down. We don't need to be writing about this. This isn't something that we need to write. Okay. So I'm going to make a copy of this graph, and we're going to start over. So here's another one. This is how it would look like originally, correct? Then what does the negative 3 do? It's going to shift it down 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw my asymptote. 
my asym my asymptote before was on the x-axis, so that's going to shift down one, two, three. It's not going to move horizontally, so I'm just going to put like a reference asymptote right there. So this is going to shift one, two, three. Okay? Next one. What happens when it goes, when I have a shift with the asymptote, sorry, with the exponent? So normally I would have zero, one. Two, 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 one, two, three, four. I'm going to grab all of this, send it to the back. Okay, this time let's do, yeah, I'll still use red. I should use black. Okay, Jay, what did you say? It shifts on the x-axis. So it's going to be moving. Are we going to go to the right or are we going to go to the left? Nate, whatever you're watching, shut it down. In fact, all computers should be shut down. Say it again. Goes to the left or the right? Goes to the left, but this says positive three. Right? Yeah, it's always the opposite. It hasn't always worked out like that when we have a number with the X. So it's going to shift to the left three. So before, so my asymptote here is not going to change, right? Correct? It's going to stay the same? So my asymptote is going to stay the same. But that horizontal reference is going to shift, right? I'm sorry, not horizontal, vertical. So instead of it being right here, where that zero, 1 is right here, that zero, 1 is going to shift over 3. 1, 2, 3. You see how my origin basically has shifted over? So then my graph is going to shift over. Um, I want to copy it. So my graph is going to shift over three. Make sense? So it's the same shape. It's just shifted over three. So what do you think this one's going to do? Shift to the right three. So this time I'm not even going to write my parent graph. This time I'm going to take and I'm going to write in that shift over three. So instead of being here, I'm going to go to the right three. So over one, two, three. My asymptote is still the same. So I basically, I've just moved my origin over. Okay? So when I move my origin over, now I can go zero, one. Right? That's kind of our parent graph now. Zero, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, four. When I go negative one, what's this going to be at? When I go negative one, it's going to be only a half. Just like all the rest of them, right? It keeps repeating the same behavior. It just shifts to the left, to the right, up, and down. not when you have something adding it. Hold on, let me look at the next one. Okay, Essence has a good question. Tell me a graph, Essence. So we have a base of two. What do you want me to, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? X plus two. Tell me, tell me what you want to add to this also. Plus two? Well, can we make it different numbers? That way they're plus four. Like that? All right, so let's check this out. This is exactly where I was going with this. This was a great question. All right, 
So what does this part do? It's going to go up four. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four. Right? And what's this? I should have done that in solid. So you can actually see it. One, two, three, four. And what's that positive two with the X going to do to it? No. It's going to go to the left two. So now I've got a new origin. Correct? So there's my new origin. So I go to my origin and I graph my parent graph. Zero, one. One, two. Two. When I square, when I take two to the first power, I get two. When I take two to the second power, I get four. And two to the negative one, I get a half. There are my four points. What do you mean I don't have to add? See, you're using tables. And I think tables are more confusing. But they make sense to you. So you go ahead and use them. But I don't want to ask that question to everybody else because that's going to confuse everybody else when they're using transformation. I'm just using the parent graph and just transforming my horizontal and my vertical asymptotes. Yes, sir. It would. But do you guys see how? Yeah. yeah. The problem with, it, with this one is you guys were always starting with zero, right? So if I started with zero, I would get two to the zero minus three, which is one eighth. And that's not fun. Why do all those fractions? But if you can understand that this is a transformation to the right three, then I would have started with three as my x. Because then I would have gotten two to the three minus three, which is two to the zero, which is one. Then I would have said, oh, the next value I'd put in for x would be what? Two or four. Because you see what I mean when you understand the transformation? You would know where to start with your table. Yes, Emily? If you know where, if you know the shift, you don't have to show any work, right? More questions. You can do it either way. This way is a lot more work, and if you make a mistake, you're going to get all confused. Yeah. You know, if you actually understand what the graph is doing, it will guide you to be able to do this. If you if you really feel like you need to do that, okay? So the big picture today was. What does that shift do? So that is a what, horizontal or vertical shift? That's a horizontal shift. And this one is a vertical shift. Let me look at what your homework is. I may adjust it. It's just different. OK. I don't want to push this. So this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to get behind, but that's okay. All right, so you did the exploration on the front. Did any of you do the exploration on the back yet? Let's do the exploration on the back tomorrow. So tonight, your homework's going to be cut in half. So you're just going to do exactly what we did today, but you're going to use a new parent graph. Your parent graph is going to have a base of three. Okay, so let's talk about what a parent graph with a base of three looks like. It's kind of like your magic numbers. So you're always going to have the magic number of 0, 1, unless it gets shifted, right, up or down. But it's always 0, 1, that first one. Then if I go over 1, what's 3 to the 1? 3. So 1, 2, 3. And what's 3 squared? 9. So I should be going up 9? And what's 3 to the negative 1? 1 third. So those are your magic numbers, right? Then all you have to do in your homework is just add the horizontal and vertical shift. Okay? So let's get started. You're welcome. I don't want to push this because if we go too fast in the beginning of this, you guys are just going to get completely confused.
this one's actually not that hard. Yeah, they're super slow. Um, you could probably come to tutoring for like 10 minutes and I could steer you in the right direction. And you probably don't need much. Just the front. I'd like you to try and complete this part right here. You don't have to do the table part, but I would like you to do everything on the right. Does that make sense? If you, won't, if you feel more comfortable with just understanding the transformation, just do that. Or use a table to check yourself. You know, like check to make sure you've got the right point. Did I give you guys yours? You have them? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, we're within 10 minutes. You can't. Would you guys rather have this up right now or this? That? Absolutely. So don't throw away that transformation, the activity we did. We're going to do the back of it tomorrow. Okay, Kane? Yes. Andrew? Only the front. Essence. Okay, give me a second. Let me end this, okay? Yes. You just 